Hello. Hey, Diane. Hey. Hey, my name's Shane Noblin. I'm a local real estate agent here in Edenton. How you doing today? I'm doing good. Awesome. I saw your property on Virginia Road came off the market. Kind of shocked me. It's a beautiful place. Are you still trying to sell that? I wish you'd have called me sooner. Don't listen to what people say behind your back. A lion will never look back when small dogs bark. Guys, I'm on here with Patrick McClintock. Now, I know his screen down there says something else. He's borrowing a computer from someone. But Patrick is out in Colorado making FISBO calls today, and we're going to see if we can get something good going here. Set an appointment, have a good rapport building conversation with someone. Him and I were talking just before I started this video about how I believe 95% of real estate is about building rapport. If you get people to like you, they're going to use you as their real estate agent, right? If they dislike you, guess what? I don't care what kind of pie charts you throw at them, what kind of glossy presentations, what kind of suit you're wearing. If they don't like you, they're not going to use you as a real estate agent. So we have to get really good at building massive amounts of rapport in short amounts of time. Better we get at that on the phone, easier it is to set appointments. Then we get at the appointments and we start piling that rapport back into the situation with substance sprinkled in. It can't be all rapport, right? It has to be other stuff too. You have to you know, have a knowledge of how to sell real estate and all that other stuff. But rapport is, I think, the most critical part of this. So we shall see how Patrick manages with whoever the next victim is on his call list. <laughs> Yep. All right. Because I'm on a different laptop, I have to find my Fizbo search on Zillow again. No, you're good. And for reference, we're middle of October 2024. Um, just starting to get cold here. Uh, we, we got down in the 40s last night, and the high today is going to be upper 50s, which is chilly enough for me to put on a hoodie in the morning. And you're colder there than here in Colorado right now. What? Now I would have guessed you guys were way colder than us. No, we're in on in the seventies today. Nice. Guys, well, Patrick's getting that up uh and running. If you're looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching, feel free to book a call on my calendar link in the description below. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh it 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 really has produced wonderful results. Um, and I'd be more than happy to sit down with you on a uh, Zoom and go over what that looks like. Also, if you're thinking about a brokerage swap, we are in transfer season now, right? For real estate agents. It is the time of year where everybody looks back over their year and they, and they uh, like check in on what they did right, what they did wrong, what they're going to need to do moving forward to have a great 2025. And in some cases, you know, that is looking more and more like, well, maybe I need to change brokerages. If that's something that you're thinking about, we'd be more than happy to chat with you about that as well. Book a call on my calendar link below. Uh, Patrick took advantage of that maybe a year ago, and um, we are uh, crushing it, having a, having a good time at it. Now, if you want a minute to get your stuff set up, I can I can shoot a um, expired call. I've got a few of them queued up. Yeah, that'd be awesome. All right. All right, guys. So this particular expired, it came off the market. Um, came off the market two weeks ago, and I've got it on my list to get to, uh, and I hadn't got to it yet. This one was listed at three hundred and sixty-two thousand. It's in my hometown. Uh, 2,172 square feet, three bedroom, two bath. It was built in 1930, uh, and it was on the market for 214 days. It doesn't look like it went under contract at any point during that time. It was originally listed at 429, and it came down to 362. Now, this is important, right? Some agents will go in and attempt to buy a listing, by over-promising or over-exaggerating what they think they can get for the property with the thinking, once I have it listed for 30 days or 45 days or 60 days, 
that, uh, you know, I'll go to them and see about doing a price reduction. Problem is, is that as you accrue days on market, you're stigmatizing your property, right? As you do price adjustments, you are further stigmatizing your property because now a buyer's agent is looking at this property and going, well, it's been on the market for 200 days. It has had, in this particular case, it has had one, two, three, four price reductions. And that buyer's agent is telling their buyer they're desperate. They have to be desperate. They listed at 3-1 of 2024 for 429. Then on 416, so we're talking a month and a half later, exactly a month and a half later, they reduced it to 415. And then 5-9, three weeks later, they reduced it to 399.9. And then 610, exactly 30 days later, they reduced it to 389. And then 711, so now we're talking exactly 30 days later, they reduced it again to 362. So this is a case where we're looking at this property, and it's probably priced right now, right at 362, but now it's expired off the property. It's spent 200 and, 214 days on the property with all of these price adjustments coming. And is that because the seller was unrealistic or is that because the agent went in there and over promised attempted to win the listing by hitting them with an extravagant number that wasn't going to happen right and then they started trying to chase it down to the market well hell it's got four price reductions it, it's it's a stigmatized property and it's a huge mistake to get into this position so when i'm explaining to people at listing appointments and whatnot about my pricing and stuff I talk about this stuff with them. I said, look, huge mistake is over pricing a home with the hopes of getting lucky and then trying to chase the price down to find somebody that'll buy it. Because what happens is now you get down 200 days later, you get down to 362, which is the price it should have been at, which if it had been at 362 on day number one on the market, it probably sells for 370. They probably get an over asking price offer for it on day one, but now 214 days in and four price reductions later to now have it at 362. If I've got a buyer and we're looking at this home, I'm like, hey, let's offer 330 and see and see what happens. We're going to go in $32,000 light to see if that is something that they'll take. Because at this point, if I'm the buyer's agent, I think they're desperate. Right, but let me show you guys what I'm looking at so you can see the same property that I'm looking at. It's not a bad property. Let me get this up here. I'm going to switch the view to speaker. All right, and here we are. It's, it's not bad photography. It's done up real nice inside, right? It's staged real pretty. They have nice furniture, antique furniture for the most part. Um, house doesn't need a thing. It's a beautiful place. And chances are, so I had an agent come in earlier today um, to talk to me about expireds. And she said that her coach told her that it was a waste of time going after expireds because expireds, the only reason they expire is because the sellers are unreasonable. To lump every expired property seller into that one category is ridiculous. It's ridiculous and not true. Most of the homes that I see that don't sell, don't sell for other reasons other than price, right? Most of them don't sell because of poor photography. They don't sell because of no marketing. They don't sell because the pathetic description. They don't sell, but like something other than price. They don't sell because the agent over promised. Like, let's say that agent's in there competing against three or four other agents to try and win this listing. And the three other agents go in and say, hey, this house should be listed at 362. And you can see this is a nice place. There's nothing wrong with the photography. There is no drone photography. It should have drone photography. But back to my point, the agent, there's four agents competing 
and this is just a hypothetical, but I see it all the time. There's four agents competing. Three agents come in and say, I think we should list it at 362. And the fourth agent comes in and goes, no, I think we can get 429 for it. Like I'm, I'm confident I can get 429,000 for it. Right now, is that because that agent is a weak agent and doesn't know how to price properties? Because if so, that agent shouldn't be getting these listings. Or is it because that agent knows where the property should be priced? And instead of saying where the property should be priced, for the benefit of winning the listing, went in and overpromised with the thinking that then they would start doing price reductions and find somebody to buy their house. And that is almost an ethical violation. In my opinion, if you do that, you are purposely stigmatizing properties and then taking people's equity away from them because the offers you're going to get on a stigmatized property are not going to be the same strength offers that you're going to get on a property that's done correctly from the very beginning. So while you might get it sold, think about this. This lady, if I came in with a buyer on day 213, this one was on the market 214 days and it expired. If I came in on, on day number 213 with a buyer, it's listed at 362 and I offered 330, the aggravation of it sitting on the market all that time and all of the missed opportunities, it might be enough to where that, that person goes, you know what, to heck with it. Yeah, let's just get the thing sold. And they abandon, out of sheer aggravation, they abandon all of that equity because the agent did a bad job. Whereas if it had been priced right from the very beginning and they're getting three seventy dollars for it, now they've got another $30,000 of equity right in their pocket that they should have. So when agents do this, when agents go in there and overpromise, not to say I won't take an overpriced listing, I'll absolutely take an overpriced listing, but the opinion that I give them is where the price should be. And if they are determined to list it $30,000 over, then I'm like, hey, great, let's do it. It's going to take me longer. Right. And I don't know that we're going to find a buyer because there's th there's this house and this house and this house that are the same house, basically, that are thirty thousand dollars less. But it's not my house. If you want to list there, we'll list there. Um, so this is some of the thinking that I put into these these calls before I make them. And some of the things that I look at, you can see how deep I go in to the history of this property to be able to talk knowledgeably with Diane if she answers the phone. Hello? Hey, Diane. Hey, my name's Shane Noblin. I'm a local real estate agent here in Edenton. How you doing today? I'm doing good. Awesome. I saw your property on Virginia Road came off the market. It kind of shocked me. It's a beautiful place. Are you still trying to sell that? I wish you'd have called me sooner. Uh-oh. What happened? Well, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting the whole summer long. Nobody's called, nobody, you know, and I can't understand it because it is. It's a beautiful place. It is. Did you have many showings? No. Oh, come on. No, I did not. I'm going to say all together, I might have had four. Oh, my goodness. What kind of feedback were you getting on those showings? One said that um, it didn't have a bathroom upstairs. Okay. Uh, another one said it was on the main highway. Okay. Another one said he was afraid. Well, the same one said he was afraid he wouldn't be able to sleep. He was a light sleeper. Oh, come That's on it. now. That is it. Come on now. I grew up next to a set of train tracks. And if I, <laughs> if, if I could sleep through that, it would rattle the windows when they went by. And really, Virginia wrote, it's not like it's 17 no, and four lanes wide. Right. It's two lanes. Yeah. Well, yep. that's crazy. Uh -huh. Well, what are your plans now? Are you just going to hang on to it or are you no, going to try and get it sold? My, plan, my plans now uh -huh. is to rent it. Okay. And I'm going to rent it for a year. Gotcha. Have you already found a renter for it? No. 
Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Um, I actually live right down the road from you. I live down in Arrowhead Beach. And okay. I am, uh, so last year, 2023, I was ranked number 10 out of the 2,000 agents in, in our MLS on getting property sold. And the only thing I sell are expired properties where the other agent was not able to give their client a big win and for sale by owner properties where they're not able to find their own buyer. And I do it because I'm part of this national brokerage. And so I push a lot of my marketing to other areas of the country uh, where people are coming you know, to us from. And uh -huh. that's important because like if I push my marketing, let's say to New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, somewhere up there, um, a lot of times you've got sellers up there that are with that, that, that are using my brokerage. And those sellers want to move to the Carolinas, but they don't necessarily know where. And wow. so if our listings get pushed in front of them, a lot of times the house will bring them here because they might not uh -huh. know where Edenton is. They might not know to search for Edenton, right? But they see the house and they're like, holy cow, that's a fantastic place for 362000 And then they do a little research and they're like, yeah, Edenton, waterfront community, like a you know place uh -huh. to go retire, that kind of thing. So yeah. I have a lot of success on getting those transplants and typically they come down with cash because when okay. you sell in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, That's one right. of those, you get a lot more money for your house. And so a lot of those people are coming down. We don't have to worry about appraisals. We don't have to worry about what kind of loan it is or any of that other stuff. Uh -huh. And so I just have a lot of success with it. Um, I guess my question is if you were able to sell it before it rented, is that something you're interested in or Probably not really. You, 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 you've I, kind of made up your mind. I don't. I think I've kind of made up my mind, but let me get your number and I've got somebody here that's waiting for a haircut. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. My, my okay. number is 252 okay. 40. Okay. And then if you have a good email address, I can send you my resume. I if don't, not, I don't okay. I got and you. What was your name again? My name's Shane, like the cowboy. Shane. Shane. S H A N E. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Come back, Shane. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let yep. me call you back and um and I'll I'll talk to you a little bit more about that. That sounds yeah. good. I'm looking forward to it, ma'am. Thank okay. you much. Uh-huh. Bye. Alrighty. Bye, ma'am. All right. So like I say, we're building rapport, right? I'm talking about the stuff in, in that call. I'm talking about the stuff that pertains to real estate, for sure. I'm talking about um, my marketing going to other states and, and you know all that. But I'm also building just buckets of rapport everywhere I can. I'm building commonality because I live right down the street. I live in Arrowhead Beach and she's five minutes from me, literally. Um, we're talking about the house. I'm getting feedback information from her, from the other showings that occurred. Like all of this stuff is happening. And you could hear how deep in the relationship piece of it I'm trying to go. She's made up her mind to rent it. So now I want to kind of flesh this out a little bit. Do you already have a renter? Well, no. Well, um, we could look for a renter at the same time we're looking for a buyer if you wanted, because I could do, uh, I could do the listing and have a termination page ready for you. If you found a renter before I found a buyer, then we terminate the listing. This is gonna be my approach with this lady. We'll terminate the listing. You get your renter in place. Next year when the lease is up, if you wanna reapproach it, we'll reapproach it. We'll go that route. But um, I felt like that call went pretty well. She, she was very open and receptive uh, to the conversation, very pleasant to talk to and uh, it was just a good call. What you think, Patrick? Do you do a lot of expired and canceled calls? Um, it's been a little bit since I've done expired. I was mainly doing FISBO, but I have touched on expires before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a that was a good one. That was a good one. And the one I did right before you came in was a good one. It was a luxury listing, and. I damn near signed them on the phone. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I wish I was able to hear that one. All right. So now I'm going to lock, I'm going to lock her in as a contact. 
Molokin name, right? Diane, and then her last name. I've got it here somewhere. Diane, and then I'm going to put in expired, and then the address, Virginia Road. So when she calls me back, whether it's this evening, tomorrow, a week from now, I look down at my phone, I see Diane, I can answer the phone. Hey, Diane, how you doing? Right? I know what kind of call it is immediately. I don't have to hunt around in the conversation to get my footing. She was like, I wish you had called me before. <laughs> you know? Like, well, I'm calling you now. So <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's talk. And there's really no excuse for her house expiring off the market. It really isn't. Definitely. It's a nice house. Definitely didn't look like it. it looked like it was a nice house. Are you ready with a uh, FISBO? I am. Awesome. Let's do it. This one's been on the market for 100, 117 days, so we'll see what's happening with this one. Okay. Hey, good uh, good afternoon. This is uh, Patrick. I'm a realtor with EXP Realty in Northern Colorado. And I see here, it looks like you're trying to get a home sold over there off of 95th for sale by owner. Is that right? Correct. Awesome. How's that going for you? Let me guess. Your phone's probably been blown up. It has. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm guessing. Tonight, and I had a couple. Uh, this pretty much be the fourth one this week. A couple of offers coming through. All right. It's got a, got a couple of offers already, huh? Yep, yep. Nice. That's good to hear. Absolutely. So, do I do any of them seem seem pretty promising? One was an investor who came mobile, and then uh, there was another lady that uh, offered last night, and it's kind of low. But uh, I have a showing tonight, and then another one on Saturday. So I'm gonna see how that plays out. Right on. Well, I hope it. Uh, I hope it comes through with one that uh seems promising for you. Yeah, yeah, cool. Well you opening so, yeah, the buyer's to agent. A, a representative of me or something. What was that? Are you calling to see if I need a realtor? Oh no, I wouldn't try to to skirt the uh the listing out from under you. But uh no I'm just calling to uh learn about the property and uh, kind of see what's going on with it. Okay. So yeah. Are you looking for a real estate agent? Did, uh, pretty much a full remodel upgrade on the interior, new carpet, new uh, hardwood floors, uh, relocated the washer and dryer to the closet in the back, and got it all permitted and everything from Thornton. And so now it's just time for new buyers to enjoy it. Hey, that's what that sounds good. Now, the, the fact that you brought it up, are you are you looking for an agent to represent you? No, no. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. Commissions are expensive. Yeah, no, that, that makes total sense. I know uh, commissions tend to be expensive. So are you so working good, with buyer's agents? Good for you for, uh, you know, listing on your own. Uh, are you working with buyer's agents? Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to, to offer a buyer's commission and that's, so yes. Got it. Got it. I got it. Awesome. Well, I'm looking through the pictures here and it looks like an awesome place. Now, did you say you're an investor? No, I am said I'm willing to pay a buyer's commission. Okay, I got you. What what has you selling the home? I have another property that I'm going to fix up and pretty much sell. So I am already kind of basically an investor, but, you know, I do it at my own speed. Nice. So now I occasionally come across good fix and flip, flip so opportunities. I occasionally come across good fix and flip opportunities. Um, if I come across one that has a really good price that maybe be appealing to you, would you be interested in that? Not right now because I'm focusing on this house and then working right. on the house. And I'm focusing on selling this house and then the house that I'm living in, I'm working on that. So now I don't want to get too overexpanded right now. Oh, that, yeah. That makes total sense. That's smart. So the house you're living in now, you're looking to eventually offload that one as well? Hello. Can, can you hear me? Are you there? Hello. Oh, did I lose you? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep, yep. Okay, cool. Um, so the one that you're living in, are you looking to eventually offload that one as well? I don't know yet. It all depends on the market, you know, and if anything, I might, you know, because it was a rental. 
you know. So mm-hmm. you know, I'm just fixing it up, and I'll, you know, I, I might keep it as a rental, or I don't know what I'm going to do. I just want it. It's a uh, in a lot better neighborhood, so to speak. So I might keep it as a rental, and then buy another property out of state or something. I haven't figured it out yet. Let me do this. I I'm gonna send you. you over my resume. What's a good email for? So let me do this. Let me send you over my resume so you can meet me on paper. What's a good email for you? Yeah, brother. You know, I don't want to even waste your time. You know, I have a lot of people pretty much nibbling on this property, you know, so it's kind of like I don't even want to entertain the thought of buying another property. I just want to focus on the two that I got and get rid of one of them and then go from there, you know what I mean? So I'm not looking to do anything even once in the next year. Okay. I got you. That's fair enough. Well, you. Stay safe. Hey, you as well. Take care. Bye. All right, that wasn't bad. Um, the opening was a little rambling. Yeah, right? I know. So, <laughs> good afternoon. My name's Patrick. I'm a local realtor. I see you have a property for sale by owner on Smith Street. Is that right? You said, "Good morning." Uh, my name is Patrick. I'm a realtor with EXP Realty here in Northern Denver, Colorado, or you know whatever you said. Um, and and I see you have a. This is what you said. I see you have a property for sale, and it is for sale by owner. Is that right? Right. So kind of pare that down and 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 make it a little more bite size. Okay. Like just first name. Good morning. My name is Patrick. I'm a local realtor. You don't have to say EXP in whatever Colorado, whatever. Patrick, local realtor. I see you have a property for sale by owner on blah, blah, blah street. Is that right? The other thing that I would do on this, when he says, so are you looking to be my agent? You said no. Right? When in actuality, the answer is yes. You are looking to be his agent. So I like to use their words against him. Now, you tried to bring his words back against him at the end after saying no, but you'd already missed the opportunity kind of. So when they say something like that, when they say, let me guess, you're trying to list my property too. Well, is that what you're looking for? Like, I mean, I don't mind listing your property if that's what you're looking for. Matter of fact, I do really well at listing properties. Um, so if... If that is your, your need, I can help you with that. And then get them, chances are they're going to chuckle, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I really don't need a listing agent right now. It's like, oh, okay, great. But you are working with buyer's agents, right? If a, if a good offer came over, right? Because you know, the way it looks, you're getting low ball offers right now. And that might just be because you're not getting as much exposure as you could get. Right. With more eyeballs on the property, you could potentially be getting that asking price or over asking price offers for it versus these low ball offers that you're getting now. Right. Like just so, so some of the ways that you could have taken that conversation a little different still wasn't a bad call. Yeah. Uh, it just didn't materialize into anything towards the end because it was a little disjointed on the purpose for your call. I like that you went into the investor side of it to see if you could help him there as well. But then he had it in his mind at the end of the call that the only reason you wanted his email was so that you could sell him out another investment house. And he really didn't want that because he's already got this one he's trying to sell and this one he's trying to finish. So a little more clarity um, and then drop in with the investor side of things after the reason for the call maybe dies. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So. Not bad. Okay. Okay. Still learning all the right things to, st- to say, especially under pressure. No, you are good. With more of these calls, it's going to become more and more comfortable and just flowing. Yeah. Right? It's a little disjointed while you're trying to learn how to do it. Right. Something else you can do, take a notebook with you everywhere you go. You're making a bunch of these calls. You're going to be getting callbacks and you may be at the grocery store. You may be out of dinner with the wife. You may be whatever. Um, 
you answer the phone, you have your notebook with you, you can jot down notes about whatever it is, you know, the, the, the call, either, you know, setting an appointment or whatever. And um, then you have it. That's good advice. Okay. And that lady calls me back after getting that haircut done for whatever client she had. I'm going to mm -hmm. ask her if she would like me to stop by and meet with her to do a real estate autopsy on her place. This is something that I've developed for expireds, right? And so there, she's, she's going to be confused. And I'll say, yes, 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 autopsy. Just like if somebody dies and they don't know what the cause of death was, they do an autopsy to determine the cause of death. Right. I do real estate autopsies where I come by, we sit down and we determine, see, your listing was a living, breathing listing for 214 days and it died. And we and, and you might not, not necessarily know why it died. And so I'd like to sit down with you and go over what I think the cause of death was for your property. And it's easy to get an appointment because who wouldn't want to have a real estate autopsy done on their place? even if they're not going to list it, but chances are if they're having you over, they're considering listing the property. So I'm setting an appointment tonight for the next couple of days to go by and meet with her five minutes down the road. It's absolutely going to happen. Have you uh, used the autopsy mm -hmm. method before? <laughs> How do people mm -hmm. respond to that? They laugh. They think it's hilarious. That's awesome. I like that. These are the things that we're doing to where we don't sound like every other real estate agent. Right. And I look forward to getting to that point. Dude, I got to go catch my dog. He ran down the neighborhood. I'll be back. Hello. Hey, good afternoon. This is Patrick. I'm a, a local realtor. And I see that you have a property for sale by over, over there on uh, Jennifer Street. Is that right? Um, it is not. We're, I'm not sure where you, where you see that. I keep getting people that are asking me about it, and it's not accurate. Oh, that's good to know. So it's so it's what 1608 Jennifer Street is listed on Zillow as for sale by owner. It's listed on Zillow for sale by owner. Correct. Yeah. Got it. Uh, no. Nope, I, that's not an accurate listing, man. I'm not sure what's going on. Okay. So what I can do is I'll go ahead and I'll reach out to Zillow to let them know. And then uh, hopefully you'll stop getting harassed. Yeah, that'd be awesome, man. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> while, while I have you on the phone, do you need any help, any questions answered, anything real estate related at all? I don't, man. Thanks for asking. All right, man. You have a good day, okay? You too. The joys of working from home. That's right. So how'd the call go? You were getting on it right as I had to jet. So he was saying that he keeps getting calls and that he does not have a home for sale. Huh. Okay. Imagine so. that. Well, I tell you what. You sound like you desperately need a real estate agent. Are you looking for an investment property or something? I'd love to help you with it. Right? Flip it. So and I, just grab an email from them. So I uh, so how I said is like, hey, while well, I have you on the phone, like, is there anything I can help you with or answer any questions, you know, related to real estate? Is how I said it. Mm -hmm. And he said no. <laughs> All right. All right, guys, so I'm going back. I'm editing that video, and I'm getting it ready to put on YouTube. And I wanted to add something in. So I did not give Patrick this advice yesterday, but I think it's important. He called this for sale by owner, the number that was provided on Zillow for this for sale by owner, and he got the wrong person. So what does that tell you? That tells you that the owner of the actual property that they're trying to sell, this guy doesn't even own that property based on what I just heard. The owner probably keyed in the number, the phone number, one digit off, right? That's usually what I see happening here. And 
is sitting there confused because they're not getting any phone calls for their for their house. So in a case like this, this person is not getting bombed by agents trying to pick this listing up. They're not getting bombed by, by investors trying to steal this property out from underneath them. They're not getting any phone calls at all. So what I would recommend on one like this, it's very infrequent that you come across one that's a wrong number. You come across one that's a wrong number, skip trace that number, figure out a good phone number for this owner. And it's going to be one digit off somewhere, more than likely. The couple of times I've done it, it's been one digit off. And call them. They're going to be really happy that somebody called them about their listing. Call them, start this relationship, get this thing going. Hey, I don't know if you realize it or not. Are you getting a lot of phone calls? They're going to say, no, it's because your number's wrong. I had to go in and find it through, um, through an online search through public records because the number that you have on Zillow is not correct. They're going to appreciate that. And you're going to build rapport and show your dedication to help them with this process. And maybe they're fed up and they're ready to list it, right? Take five minutes, skip trace a number for them, call them up. You won't be, you won't be disappointed in the outcome. Now back to the video. All right, are you going to do your uh, Florida stuff now? Yeah, I'll go ahead and break away to do that. All right, brother. It was good seeing you. We'll jump on again. Awesome. Thank you, Shane. I appreciate you doing this and taking the time. See you, brother. See ya. All right, guys. So that is another one of these coaching calls where we are uh, getting better at what we're doing. We're getting better at connecting with people, better at getting people to trust us. I'm going to do one more call for you guys before I end this video. Um, this is another expired. Uh, uh, this one is, let me stop that. This one was listed at 378.500. It is a uh, three bedroom, three bath, 2,187 square feet on almost half an acre. It was on the market for 182 days and did not sell, did not go under contract anywhere in there. Uh, and here we are again. We got price reductions. So let's see. Go to history. Oh, my goodness. So we've got one, two, three, four, five price reductions. We started at 395, then we reduced it to 393, then we reduced it to 391, then we reduced it to 389, then we reduced it. Now, those were all little $1,000 or $2,000 incremental changes. Then we reduced it from 389 to 379. So that was a $10,000 change. And then we reduced it from 379 to 378.5. That was the final price reduction, 378.5. So again, I'm the buyer's agent. Hey, there's been five price reductions on this place. It's been on the market 180 something days. Let's see if we can steal it, right? That's just the way it's going to go. And, and the little thousand dollar incremental changes, that's dumb. I just don't see where that makes any sense at all. Uh, let me show you guys the photos. It's not bad photography. It's not great photography, but it's not it's not um, horrible by any stretch. Now, something interesting about this one is it was listed towards the end of 23, and it was withdrawn off the market uh, March of 24. Now we're in October of 24, and it has expired off the market. So they withdrew it six months before the listing was set to expire. At the time, it was a vacant property, right? You can see when we get to the inside. See, vacant property. Who knows? This is like an old expired now because it was withdrawn like Sellers don't know the difference between withdrawn, terminated, canceled. They don't, they don't know the difference there. And withdrawn, they were still under agreement, so we couldn't reach out to them. Now we can.
see if we can get a story out of them. Down here and here. Uh, photos aren't bad. They're not great. There's no drone photos. Um, the description is unbelievable. It is literally, let me see here. It is literally one sentence. This is a almost $400,000 house in a market where $300,000 is the midpoint. And the description is very nice, open, one-story floor plan, an Albemarle plantation just in the gate on the right with views of the lake and fountain from back screen, porch, and deck. It's not proper grammar. There's zero punctuation. It's kind of a run-on. It could probably be chopped down into two or three sentences, but it's just sad how weak the description is on this property. So no, no, no drone photos. I don't believe they're professional photos. I think it's cell phone turned sideways. I could be wrong. Um, and then no effort on a description at all. Uh, so these are all things that matter when you're listing a property. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Seven, eight, one, seven, seven, not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hey, Michael, this is Shane Noblin. I'm a local real estate agent. I saw you had a property over in the plantation on Green Court that came off of the market back in March. Just wanted to see what the plans were with that, if you're still trying to sell it or kind of what's going on with it. Um, give me a call if you get a minute. My number is 252-722-4740. That's 252-722-4740. And again, my name's Shane Noblin. I'm a local real estate agent here in Hertford. Uh, look forward to talking with you soon. Have a great day. So now I'm going to lock him in as a contact. Okay. And since we didn't get a conversation, we're going to write down on my notes voicemail. I'm going to highlight it so we can go back and try them again. And we may do one more so you guys can maybe hear me have another conversation with someone. All right. So this is an interesting property. It's 168,000, it's 1,000 square foot. Two bedroom, one bath. Uh, looks like a cabin on a lake or on a pond or a lake built in 2002. It was on the market for 193 days. Doesn't look like it went under contract at any point. And it is just a, it's an interesting place. Let me show you guys what I'm looking at here. All right, so as you can say, uh, see, when we say on the water, this is on the water. Uh, this thing is right up against the water. You can see how the property is positioned and it's got this uh, boomerang shaped uh, little, little pond or, yeah, I would say pond uh, beside it. Very cool place. You got another little house behind the pond. This one is kind of in front of the pond. Uh, they got drone photos, which is great, right? I do the exact same thing. So, some of the same angles, I'm sure. Cute place, cottage, somebody would love this. Got ducks out in the pond. Really neat place. Not too sure about, is this carpet in the kitchen? That's interesting. <laughs> oh my goodness. You can't make some of this stuff up. And the washer and dryer in the kitchen. The smaller homes you end up without anywhere for the washer and dryer. So the kitchen becomes where it is. 
still think this place would sell. If you're doing your own photography, make sure the gobbler is, 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 is shut. Nobody wants to see the open mouth. <laughs> All right. So that's it for the photos. Neat place. Let's see. Let's get the description back up. Details. No price adjustments. It was 100, 193 days. And it did not go under contract. All right, let's see what Lisa has to say. Welcome to the U.S. Cellular Voicemail 2. All right, so I'm going to send her a text message. First name, question mark. We're going to see if we can get a response. I'm going to put down on my sheet here text. Oh, here we go. She called back. Hey, Lisa, how you doing today? Hey, all right. Good, good. My name's Shane. I'm a local real estate agent. I see your property over there in Janesville came off the market. Are you still trying to get that sold or what's going on with that? Um. Well, I've just backed off of it for right now. I got you. I got you. Now, it looks like you had it on for a hundred and, how long was it on? 193 days. Did you have a lot of showings? Yeah, we did have right many showings. Gotcha. Gotcha. Good feedback. Any any kind of indication, maybe what was stopping people from moving forward? No, really couldn't figure that one out. <laughs> huh. Well, I tell you, um, Whenever I list properties, won't like my biggest concern is getting feedback from the buyers that come through. So like I spend a lot of time on making sure like I ask for feedback as I'm setting up the showing. And then I ask for feedback again an hour after the showing happens. And then the next morning, if you know they aren't responding, because uh, it's really important. Otherwise, you don't know what to you know, what's stopping them. It could be something simple that could be fixed, or it might be something that, you know, they don't like the street out front or they don't like the neighbor or whatever, which you really can't do anything about. But if you don't know, you don't know. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, we need, we, the feedback we got, the pricing was good. Um, yeah. They felt like it was a nice place. It was not at price. Um, every now and then, they didn't give us any bad reviews, but, you know, just their preference, you know, they didn't want to live that close to a highway or, right, um, right. you know, different things like that. But um, we never really could peg anything down that we could, you know, change. Huh. Yeah. Well, I tell you, last year I was ranked number 10 out of the 2000 agents in my MLS. And the only thing I sell are expired properties where the other agent wasn't able to give their client a big win or for sale by owner properties where they're not able to find a buyer themselves. And part of it is because I'm with a global brokerage. And so like I do a lot of my marketing in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania um, and Massachusetts. And the benefit to that is um, if I push my marketing up there, uh, to the agents that are in my brokerage that are in those areas, if they have a seller up there that's just looking to move to the Carolinas, they might not know where. Like they might not know Janesville, but they see a cute little cabin like this on a little pond and they're like, holy cow, that's perfect. And at 168, you know, they'll come down with cash and buy something like that. So about 30% of my listings every year are um, cash buyers from other states, you know, through my marketing and stuff. Uh, so if it's something that you're still interested in maybe getting sold, I'd love to sit down with you, maybe look at the place and come up with the game plan. Well, um, I'll think about that. And right now I'm on my job. And, yes, ma'am. Um, I can give you a call back. I got you. It sounds good. What's a good email for you? I'll send you over my resume. Um, at Gmail. Uh -huh. Okay. I'll, uh, 
I'll send you my resume there. And then um, is there a better time I could call you back when you're not at work? Maybe it, like in the evenings or mornings or something? Yeah, later in the evenings after five. Okay. Sounds good, ma'am. Thank you much. You have a fantastic day. Thank you. All right. We'll see you. All right. So built in a little bit of rapport on that call. Not a lot of rapport, but she was at work. You could hear a lot of background stuff going on. And so I don't try to push if they're at work. I don't, I don't try to, you know, well, let me just say a little bit more. Let me get a little bit out. If they say they're busy, well, when's a better time we could talk? And, and, and I'll, you know, I'll call you back because I don't want to do a quick converse, conversation. I want to do a long conversation. But um, that's one. I'll set an appointment with her. She's still interested in selling that place. She's confused why it didn't sell already. And now I've given a little pitch on how I might be different than the last agent. I knew before making the call that the last agent was part of a small independent brokerage right here in the area. And so they don't have a global reach, right? And, and not all of you guys are going to have a global reach. You know, you got to work with what you have. For me, I don't mind working with the fact that I'm part of a global brokerage that can reach out, you know, to, to other countries. Uh, we're in 30 different countries, as well as all across the U.S. and Canada and Mexico and all that. So I have that reach where I can push my stuff out within our systems here and uh, potentially bring buyers from other areas. So that's one of my value adds that I can, you know, plug in here. And you heard how I kind of plugged it in. You know, um, I'm confused why it didn't sell. What kind of feedback were you getting? You know, I think feedback's really important. And you want to go down those paths of, you know, giving them a window into what it's like to work with you before actually working with you. But when I call her back later this evening, uh, six, seven o'clock, um, I fully expect to set an appointment to go meet with her and check the place out. Uh, and, and that should be another easy listing. Um, not that it's a big money listing. 168000 is, you know, half of our midpoint. But it's another listing. It's another property to sell. So why not? Right. Um, hope you guys enjoy these videos. I really enjoy making them. Uh, I do have a lot of fun doing this. At the same time, I'm growing my business. This is one of the things about what I do that is so much fun. You know, I am I am creating uh, cash flow for myself. I'm creating business. At the same time, I'm on here. I'm talking to you guys, sort of giving you a window into like what I do, how I do it. Uh, and all that. And, you know, at the end of the day, if y'all are able to pick up something from this that you enjoy or that you can take and apply to your business, you know, great. That's awesome. That's, that's all I could ask for. That's, that's the reason I do this just to help as many agents succeed as possible. Um, really enjoy doing these guys. Y'all have a fantastic day. We'll see you on the next one. Listen to this. I asked God, why are you taking me through rough waters? He replied, because your enemies can't swim.